Hi, Chris Mason. Uh, you'll forgive my uh, lack of editing and <clears throat> the impromptu nature of this uh, video. I uh, just wanted to put this out quickly. Um, I've been watching uh, videos, I've been seeing some videos on online, Facebook specifically, uh, where uh, people are talking about uh, what's called accommodating resistance bands and chains uh, for strength training and how uh, they don't use them and uh, certainly uh, intimating that, that they are either uh, ineffective or, uh, uh, well, I guess that, just that they're ineffective, uh, not a needed tool. And <clears throat> I guess if you're uh, you know, going to play the semantics game, they aren't needed, um, but they are, most certainly are effective. Uh, I want to specifically talk about bands. I may do a different video, talk about chains and whatnot, but let's, I'm going to keep it to bands for this particular short. Um, okay, well, what I want to do is I want to discuss um, what bands do for you and uh, also touch on the subject of what, what I just related to a second ago, which was, you know, are they needed or not? Well, there's been people throughout uh, strength training history who got extremely strong without the use of accommodating resistance, or at least the use of bands and or chains. Uh, so uh, are they needed? No, of course not. Uh, but does it follow that because those people got extremely strong, that bands or chains uh, are ineffective or not a better tool? Uh, no, it does not. Uh, that's that's a, a logical fallacy to, to, to make that connection. Uh, <clears throat> You know, and you could even, the argument would be, frankly, that those people who got where they got without them would have been better off, either gotten to where they got more quickly, and or exceeded their best uh, with, the, with the proper use of accommodating resistance. So, anyway, let's briefly talk about, there's two major points that bands, two major things that bands can do for, your, for you in your training. Uh, first one, and not in any particular order, First one, uh, and I want to use the squat, a barbell back squat as the example, uh, simply because almost everyone can relate to it. So when you squat, as you get down in the hole, the resistance becomes difficult. In other words, that's essentially the hardest component of the exercise, right around that parallel position uh, or just above it. And uh, as you arise further, the leverages that your body, anatomical leverages that you have, make the training, make the, I'm sorry, make the load seem easier. In other words, you do not have to work as hard. It gets easier and easier as you stand up. The further you stand up, the easier it is. So that is a, if you will, a limitation of a barbell exercise in terms of training the involved musculature, stressing the involved musculature. Uh, <clears throat> it's hardest in that lower position and then gets easier. So the muscles have to produce less force as you rise because mechanical leverage improves. So, if you want to find a way to optimize or make the muscular, in other words, put the muscles under the greatest amount of tension for the greatest period of time possible for every given repetition, you want to look for something that's in a form of accommodating resistance, something that changes the strength slash force curve of the involved movement. What a jump stretch band is, and very briefly for those who aren't familiar with it, a jump stretch band is essentially a very large rubber band, I mean a very large one. And what you do is you secure, like in the case of a squat, you'll secure one end to the floor or something near the floor, if you will, and then the other end to the ends of a barbell. And obviously, as you stretch it, it increases the amount of resistance that it's providing. So, as you can imagine from that brief explanation, as you squat with a, against a band, you get down into the hole, the band is providing the least resistance, but the, the, the leverages... Uh, the mechanical leverages involved in the movement make the barbell load, whatever that may be, the heaviest, if you will, at that point, or at least feel the heaviest to your muscles, require the most force. As you go up, when the leverages improve and the band starts stretching, the band is providing greater and greater resistance. So the band is offsetting a significant portion of the improvement, the lightening of, of the load, if you will, um, via the improved leverages. So what does it do? So what's that doing? That's making, that's, and I already, of course, touched on it, that is increasing the, the amount of force production needed to complete the range of motion. So you're placing the, the involved musculature under a greater amount of stress 
for a longer period of time in each repetition, which makes each repetition more efficient. So it is a, a way of stressing musculature with less total work. Uh, and that is a benefit because when you're talking high intensity exercise, which is strength training, intensity being defined as a percentage of your one repetition maximum, in other words, when you max out, that's 100%. Uh, when you're doing that sort of exercise, your body can only tolerate a given amount of that exercise. And when I say tolerate, that's not the correct term. Your body can only benefit from a given amount of exercise. You can tolerate a lot more than you can benefit from. So, but in a, a, a folio, what a lot of people end up doing is they do too much high intensity exercise, too much volume at the very high intensity levels, and they overtrain and then they don't make progress, etc. But that's for another video. I'd say the second major component of what bands can do for your training, and again, we'll relate it to the barbell back squat, is <clears throat> the band provides, when you lower the weight, that's called the eccentric phase. When you raise it, it's the concentric phase. The bands can provide for what's called overspeed eccentrics. In other words, if you were lowering with a barbell, you literally could just drop, and then hit the barbell will accelerate uh, at the speed uh, you know, provided for by gravity, which is, I think, 9.8 meters per second squared, or whatever it is. And forgive me if I don't remember exactly. Uh, obviously, you can't do that. You can't just drop. So what you have to do is you have to control the load as you lower the weight. Well, a band, as it's pulling you down, a band can allow you to do a faster lowering and overspeed eccentric of the weight in a controlled fashion. And the benefit of that is multifold. Uh, one, you get, you get stored elastic energy in, in the uh, uh, contractile and non-contractile elements of your body. In other words, your tendons, your connective tissues build up stored elastic energy. And just like the band, when you stretch tendons, once you release that tension, they're going to stretch. In other words, you're building up resistance when you're stretching them. And that gets released and provides for a more forceful, a greater degree of force on the concentric portion. Second to that, and, and as a kind of uh, uh, associated component of that, is uh, uh, the stretch reflex. In other words, like when you jump, you do a very quick dip before you jump, and that activates the stretch reflex, and that provides for a much more powerful, much more forceful uh, concentric contraction. Uh, but, or not but, so even though you're not doing the speed that you would on a jump, in other words, the descent, the rate of descent with overspeed eccentric is still not the rate of descent when you're dipping the quick dump, uh, uh, <laughs> the quick dip when you jump, it still, it still, I believe, taps into a, a degree of that jump stretch reflex. In other words, there's enough speed going on there and you're stretching the tissues with enough speed that the nervous system notes it and, again, provides for a more forceful uh, concentric contraction, not again, but provides for a more forceful concentric contraction. So you get increased force from the elastic buildup plus a more forceful contraction itself. And uh, there's been studies that show this, that the faster you lower it, the faster you come up with it for the aforementioned reasons. So the bands allow for that. Uh, and those are the two major points. And, you know, it's essentially inarguable. It's, it's, it's an immutable fact. You can't, you, you, you can't argue against that. So anyone that says that, that, that there tries to say or intimates that bands are ineffective or don't, aren't needed, etc., well, yes, they're right. They're, you know, if we're getting a, a very technical, they're right. They're not needed. But those who use bands properly benefit from their use and can achieve greater results than those that do not all other factors being equal. So if you had a set of identical twins, hypothetically, the one that used the bands could make greater progress than the one that does, does not. Uh, so anyone that tells you differently is either selling you something, you know, trying perhaps to differentiate themselves and, and, and why their program is great and da 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 so you don't need this stuff, um, or they're ignorant, or they're lazy, you know, any, any combination, but they're not providing you valid information. So uh, please make a note of that. And uh, please use bands. Thanks for your time.